You are a knight, born of noble blood. Whilst others frolicked and fornicated, you learnt the ways of the sword. You grapple, hoist, and joust. Never would you suffer a lack of enemies to hone your skills on, for there is always another peasant uprising. No matter how many babies you toss at them, how could a disheveled clatter of clubs and pointy sticks ever threaten you? A warrior elite! What folly is this? An enemy has dared challenge you to a duel with a pointy stick? Disdainfully, you prepare to end him rightly, when all of a sudden... The spear has been described as king of weapons, and it's extremely dangerous in an open environment that doesn't constrict its movement too much. So, how do you defeat the damn thing? The lazy answer is, with another long-hafted weapon. Many pole arms are essentially spear plus and can match or exceed its reach and definitely beat it in striking power, although not all can keep up with its speed. What else can you do? Upgrade your tech, maybe. Guns are what annihilated pike formations in the age of pike and shot. Speaking of upgrades, maybe you'd like some upgrades for your fingers. No, I'm not talking cybernetic implants. I'm talking rings. I've got to say, of all the sponsors I've had, Thorum is definitely among my top three favorites. The rings are so well made, such cool designs, unique, very interesting materials, and they're handmade in Tampa, Florida. I always like to support small businesses. And they're designs for just about anyone. If you like it simple and rugged, there are plenty of options. If you like it complex and fancy, no problem. And anything in between, really. So next time somebody asks you what rings you got, you can be like, oh, just tungsten carbide inlaid with meteorite and fossilized dinosaur bone. How about you? So check out Thorum. The link is in the description below. Cheating aside, what about swords? What can they do against spears? First, let's take a quick look at three main ways to thrust with a spear. The first is simply stepping into it, with or without pistoning the arms. The second is a sliding thrust, where you push with just a rear hand. The third is a thrust with the rear hand while letting go with the front hand. This is a high-risk, high-reward maneuver. It's quick and far-reaching, but leaves you vulnerable for a moment because you give up a lot of control over the spear. Keep these in mind for the sparring footage later. The first thing that people often say when they think of sword versus spear is... Go for the head! Well, in a prolonged fight, the sword clearly has the durability advantage. There is a risk that the blade might bend from hard strikes with the spear, and there is always a small risk that the blade could break in case of material defects. But between these two weapons, if something breaks, it's much more likely to be the haft of the spear. The movie trope of slicing clean through a haft in one swing is ridiculous, but it will definitely get damaged here and there until it eventually fails. The question is, can the swordsman survive long enough for that to happen? By the way, I'm talking long swords and smaller here. With one of these, it would be a different kind of game. Maybe that's a topic for another video. If I'm facing a spear with a sword, of course, I have to deal with the enormous reach disadvantage, which is problematic. Also, spear thrusts are quite fast, thrusts in general. You don't see them coming as well as a cut, and uh, so you need to somehow defend against that. Now the manuscripts generally, a lot of them at least, show the defense pretty simply, just some sort of false edge deflection against the thrust. So let's say I'm um, in this low guard here, he thrusts, I deflect it to the side, then I step in for the cut. From the other side, right, so the right leg is forward, and as he throws the thrust, boom, I deflect, and then as soon as I've got this, I step in with the left, and it cut either from this side or from that. Doesn't really matter a whole lot. That's a theory. The problem is, that really only works if the spearman overcommits and just comes in with his mighty thrust and doesn't really, doesn't have a backup plan, so to speak. If this is a feint, I'm in trouble. Because if he faints and I cut up here and then he goes low, oh crap, that's not good. So for that reason, I often like to obtain a bind. So if I, if I move in and I, I just contact the spear. So now I can, I can feel what's going on and I can also 
push it over to the side and then hopefully come in in some kind of way. This is still not easy because what he wants to do now is disengage and thrust either high or low. So if I, if I got this, as soon as I move in, he can do this and now I've, I've got a problem. Now I got to deal with this, which anything I can do from here is going to take me longer than it takes him to simply thrust and kill me. So interestingly, uh, Meyer has one scenario where the guy with the sword is literally stabbed through the side and he just cuts him anyway. So the idea is if you take that thrust, if you're unable to defend against it, you might as well cut the spearman to death because this has already happened. You can't like you may die, you may survive, depending on where you got hit, but being run through with a spear is not likely to stop you immediately. So there's a good chance that you can, you have at least one action left before you collapse, but chances are you might actually survive for a while longer either way. And you might even survive it altogether if you're lucky. So if like I, I try to defend against it and it just doesn't work and he thrusts, you know, runs me through, I'm just gonna go boom, you know, just hit him as hard as I can in the head, just split his damn skull and hope for the best then. Again, this depends on the spearman because there's really no need to just run them through all the way. The smarter thing to do is just go for a, a shallower thrust and just remove it immediately if you can. You know, just like about this much, you know, just, just thrust and get the hell out of there. Quick in and out, you know how it is. Single-handed sword seems worse against a spear because you have even less reach. Depends. Uh, if you actually lunge forward, you have a pretty good amount of reach because now you're turning your entire body. Displacing the spear thrust simply with your arm. Sounds dumb, but if you time it right, it works because all I need to do is simply swipe it aside. You know, like as long as I don't mistime it so that I take the spear head through my hand, I should be fine. So this, right? And the good thing about that is if I manage this, I already have the hand here so I can grab it and then I can murder him. It's pretty difficult to wrench this free. Like he can try, but as, as long as I have a, a hold on it, I'm, I'm good here for the most part. So one of the manuscripts shows deflecting this and then he tucks it under his arm. So he's got it like this, which is great. Like now he can definitely not do anything. At this point, he basically needs to let go of his spear and draw his sidearm because there's nothing he can do otherwise. Again, this is much easier said than done because he's not really going to want to allow me to do that. With a single-handed sword, they also show the same false edge deflection. One way is from a low position like this, boom, and then I can grab this because I had the other hand free. Of course, with a long sword, you can also let go with the offhand and grab it that way. Uh, there's also uh, one guard position, which is more like this. So the, uh, the hilt is low near the knee and is pointing up at the face. So it's still described as a, as a false edge deflection. So if he thrusts now like this, basically, so I have to turn my body into it. That's how I'm interpreted at least. Yeah, let's see how well that goes. Let's look at the successful attempts first, then the semi-successful, and finally um, all the rest. The spear thrust narrowly missed me and then I landed a hit on the hand inside the gauntlet. Yikes. I took a solid smack with a spear half, which would definitely hurt in a real fight. And with enough power might even be enough to fracture the hip but it wouldn't break my momentum enough to prevent me from cutting to the head. Sometimes all you need is a bit of luck for the spearman to miss. Thrusts require more accuracy than cuts after all.
Here our hands collided, which interrupted my cut and turned it shallow at best. I narrowly dodged the point to my face and had a great opportunity to grab the spear, but screwed it up. And again, almost got it. Zara got punished for being half asleep, apparently. I just let him win the bind. Yeah, um, I was not deliberately trying to turn him into a eunuch, okay? There I managed to shove the spearhead away from my face.
The single-handed thrust came in handy here. The sword would have hit my right arm if I hadn't let go. I'm sure you've noticed, fighting a spear with a sword is hard. Maybe not the Dark Souls kind of hard the way Sickle vs. Sword is, but it's rough. Against an untrained peasant who has only strength and speed to rely on, sure, superior footwork and technique wins the day. But a spearman who knows how to fight? Both Sindri and I have much more experience with swords than spears, yet the odds are still heavily in favor of the spear. In a full suit of plate armor, it wouldn't be quite as hard with a sword, because you would be able to tank certain hits, which you couldn't afford in an unarmored fight. And there are definitely things you could do better. For example, my habit of moving backwards while defending. It works well when my weapon has similar reach or more, but it's obviously counterproductive when facing a longer weapon. And of course, better reflexes and quicker movements always help. We sparred on different days and did better or worse depending on how tired we were at the time. Keep in mind, things like speed and footwork help both fighters, so at comparable levels of skill and fitness, this spear has a serious advantage. Generally, what seems to work best is waiting for a spear thrust to displace it and move in to counter. Rushing in first often just gets you impaled. Grabbing the haft would be ideal, which is not easy, especially while wearing gauntlets. Chopping into the haft with a sword blade whenever possible would be advantageous over the long run, but aiming at it leaves you vulnerable if the opponent dips under and counters, avoiding contact with the blade. Or you could be smart and grab another hafted weapon with plenty of reach and power, like a Dane axe, for example. Alright, I hope you found this interesting and entertaining. Check out other relevant videos linked in the description below and smash all the buttons and stuff. You know how it goes. Thanks for watching.